This year is dedicated to the memory of Rachalaya Basar Chaim Tzvi. This week's parsha, or rather, this week's parshiot, are Vayakel and Pekude. The last two parshiot in Sefer Shemot, in the book of Exodus. I wanted to talk about the very last section in Parsha Pekude, and that is after Moshe has already made the Mishkan after the artisans have built all the vessels, after Moshe builds the Mishkan, puts it all together, and finally the Mishkan is complete. And what happens once that Mishkan is finished? So please turn to chapter 40, verse 34. That's Perak Mem, Pasuk Lamedalid. Well, before we even get to that Pasuk, let's just read the Pasuk before. Verse 33, at the very end of the verse it says, Vayichal Moshe et hamlacha, and Moshe completed the work. Moshe completed the work of building the Mishkan, of building the tabernacle, and placing all the vessels inside the Mishkan. And what happens now? Verse 34, Vayichas ha'anan et oha mo'ed, and the anan, the cloud, covered the tent of meeting, uchvod Hashem ha'leet ha'mishkan, and the glory of God filled the Mishkan, filled the tabernacle. And Moshe could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud was resting upon it. And the glory of God filled the Mishkan. And when the cloud lifted from atop the tabernacle, Yisru B'nei Israel, the children of Israel would travel, B'chol Mas'ehem, in all their travels and all their camping. V'im lo ha'anan, and if the cloud would not go up, V'lo Yisru, and they would not travel, Ad yom he'oloto, until the day that it would lift. Ki anan Hashem al ha-mishkan yomam ve'eshchi ya bo because the cloud of Hashem is on the Mishkan in the day and the fire would be upon it at night. Le'ne kol Yisrael before the eyes of all excuse me, le'ne kol Beit Yisrael before the eyes of the entire house of Israel b'chol mas ehem in all their travels. And with that, we finish Sefer Shemot, the book of Exodus. This is a very interesting section and there are many questions that came to my mind and come to the commentators' minds when they read these verses. First of all, what's the difference between the cloud and the glory of God? Is it one thing or two separate things? Again, the cloud in Hebrew is called Anan. The glory of God is called Kvod Hashem. Is it one or, or something else? And again, the verse might make us think that it's different because we're told, again in verse 34, that the cloud covers the tent of meeting and the glory of God fills the Mishkan. So something is surrounding it and something else is filling it, which would make us think that it's actually two separate things. But if that is so, if the cloud and the glory of God, or now from now on I will be calling it in the Hebrew, if the Anan, the cloud, and the glory of God, Kavod Hashem, are there, what is the difference between them? The next question which comes up is, why can't Moshe enter the Mishkan? Why can't Moses enter the tabernacle? What's the reason? We know Moshe would actually speak to God from within the Mishkan, according to the understanding of a certain verse in Vayikra. So if that is so, why can't he enter now? Is this a permanent state of affairs or is it gonna change? And then continuing, what exactly does it mean that the cloud would guide them in their travels or in their camping? And of course the last question is, why does the book of Shemot end with this section? We know what it began with, began with. we know all the things that w- were in this entire book since we've been learning them these past few months. But why does it end with this? Why does it end with the cloud of Hashem resting upon the tabernacle and the kavod Hashem, the glory, filling the Mishkan? So let us begin and we'll see how Rashi answers some of these questions and then we'll go on to other commentators. Turn to verse 35. Rashi is going to address the question of if Moshe cannot enter the Ohel Moed, the Mishkan, now, if he cannot enter the tabernacle now, how did he communicate with God? 
So within Rashi, the Katsuf Echadomer, and another verse we have says, And when Moshe would enter, when he would come to the Olmoed, and the verse continues to say, then he would hear the voice of God coming from between the Kruvim, from between the cherubs that are on top of the Aron, that are on top of the Ark, within the Kodesh HaKodeshim, within the Holy of Holies, and that's how God would communicate with Moshe. So if we have one verse in Vayikra, it's actually, excuse me, not Vayikra, in Bamidbar, chapter 7, that tells us that Moshe would enter the tabernacle to speak with God. And we have another verse here telling us that Moshe can't enter, so... How do these two psukim, how do these two verses work out? They contradict. 